Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. This is going to be a reading on <clears throat> Georgia Republican Governor Brian Kemp. News broke today that he was questioned and sat down for an interview with Jack Smith several months ago. He said the interview did not last very long. He was asked questions, uh, similar questions that were asked at, in front of the special grand juries. And he said, I told him the same answers. I spoke the truth. He followed the law and the constitution and answered any questions they had truthfully. Um, let's see. <laughs> this article had some very interesting moments. When he asked what he makes of Trump's current claims that he, uh, Trump is immune from prosecution for crimes committed during his presidency, Kemp said, well, listen, I don't think anybody is above the law, you know, Democrat or Republican, independent, myself or anybody else. You know, note to GOP, did you see how hard that answer was? <laughs> did you see how easily that answer flowed out? <laughs> you know, and for Nikki Haley, uh, the, the Civil War was about uh, slavery. Rock and roll. Um, he, uh, he dodged a question about whether he thought uh, uh, Fonnie Willis should be uh, disqualified, basically saying, hey, I'm a, I'm a witness in that, uh, I'm a witness in that probe and I don't want to speak too much about it. That's a safe move, you know? I don't want to comment on anything. I'll keep my opinions to myself. Um, uh, when asked about if he worried jury, jury voters may not get a, a justice if Willis is disqualified. And he would just say, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, I never thought this case would go before, go to trial before the election. And he just says, yeah, I want people to focus on the election and let the judge make his rulings on this case going forward. And said, when asked about Trump potentially, we would say, I see a path for him winning and I see a path for him losing. Eh, you know. There you go. This comes across as mildly reasonable. Speaking of mildly reasonable or unreasonable, time for my hat. <laughs> On Tarot of the Seven Seas, my uh, YouTube channel that I started recently that focuses on EU-related uh, uh, political tarots, Prince William has asked for an end to hostilities in Gaza ahead of the House of Commons voting on an issue for ceasefire, for a ceasefire in Gaza. So uh, the reading that's going up tonight at 10 o'clock p.m., which is two hours after this video goes up, uh, we'll look into the energy around that. Um, will the House of Commons listen to what William is asking for and vote for a ceasefire? How does William feel after the vote? And then we look at um, uh, Netanyahu and if, for some reason, the uh, House of Commons were to vote on a ceasefire. Would he actually heed it or what would it take to get him to heed it? So if you want to catch up on some international news and uh, stuff with the royals and fighting over in uh, in uh, Gaza, go check out Tarot by the Seven Seas. I'll leave a link in the description. Back to your regularly scheduled show. <laughs> okay, the purple hat gone. Back to this reading. Let's look at the energy of Governor Kemp and his um, revelation that he has testified uh, to Jack Smith and did an interview. Entertainment purposes only. Ace of Cups, and it's upside down, so whip it around. Ace of Cups. Um, <clears throat> I think Governor Kemp was you know, he's passionate about doing the right thing. If it helps the Republican Party that much better, I suppose. But at least he's not going to put himself in a bad position. Oh, heck no. He has his passions, but he has his limits. He's not a Trump sycophant. He probably would have liked Trump to have been reelected and would have happily uh, endorsed Trump policies, but not to the point of, you know, going to prison for him, crossed with the Ten of Swords. He said he was telling the truth. I think he probably came across as very sincere. Um, the Ten of Swords, is that the ending of Trump? No, I think what this is, is that every question he asked, he answered truthfully, and all the questions were going in the same direction, 
with the same conclusion. No inconsistencies there. Those questions, if they were about Trump and election interference in Georgia, what we've heard on the tape, what he said to the press, is what he said to the grand jury, is what he said to Jack Smith, and that's not good news for Donald Trump. Underneath it all is the two of ones. Um, he expects, uh, I suspect he's getting ready that he's going to have to testify in the Georgia Rico case going forward. He might be looking at his political career after all this is said and done as well, but Governor Kemp and his, um, his crew on this issue are on the right side of history. And I don't think that's lost on him. And I don't think he's planning on being on the wrong side of history anytime soon. In the past, we have the Knight of Swords. Well, it's funny because, you know, he wasn't even the one that recorded it. It was like his his campaign manager. There was a another person who wasn't even in the state at the time recorded the phone call. Um, and thank God they did because he has now something to defend himself with. And when the call came to break the law and support Trump, he wouldn't do it. Didn't do it. Refused to do it. Maybe because he was being recorded, he he basically said, no, I'm not going to do that. There is no way I'm going to do that. But by whether he did it, whether he didn't abide by it because he was being recorded and it was going to break the law or because he has, oh, I don't know, morals and ethics, that he's going to end up on the right side of history. And this could help him later on in a Republican Party that's not dominated by the Putin wing faction of it. Current situation is the Eight of Wands um, messaging getting out. So this is you know, this news getting out that he was interviewed by Jack Smith. He freely acknowledges it. And the messaging he's sending out is, I didn't, tell, you know, whether he's sending it to Donald Trump or to anyone else, he it's probably, you know, it's probably to Donald Trump and to uh, Republicans. You know what I said. I've said it. I've been public with my uh, with what's happened. I have not deviated. So in some ways, the message is, I didn't tell them any more than they don't already know. Wink. You know, that sort of thing. Kind of the underhanded way is like, I didn't tell them anything else. I just told them the same thing y'all know. I'm a, I'm a known variable. You can, you can account for me in your strategies going forward. Hmm. Overarching energy is the Nine of Swords. I can imagine <laughs> things are difficult on Brian Kemp because of the passions of the Trump supporters at the thought of Donald Trump being brought down brings them out in force and quickly too. And they make people's lives miserable. Bomb threats, threats to your safety, threats to your family, um threats to your dog, you know, all the things that, you know, all the things that people do when they, they're at their ugliest and don't think they're, they'll get caught. The probability of them caught is basically minimal and therefore they won't actually pay the consequences of it. And probably some of them would mean it, but they're too lazy to actually act on it. The lesson to be learned is the king of wands. You know, it's not easy to take action and to take the right action, especially when you have negative, passionate negative forces charging in, raising Cain and making your life miserable. But here's the thing. When you're a leader, you have to take action and you have to take appropriate action. You didn't swear an oath to Donald Trump. You swore an oath to the Constitution. And you sometimes you have to endure all this to do the right thing. Not easy, but then again, being a leader isn't an easy job. Outcome, two of coins. Flipping. That's my card for flipping. He probably certainly said things um, uh, to uh, Jack Smith. I suspect on that messaging, he 
neglected to mention that Jack Smith might have asked a few extra questions or asked some questions that were maybe a little bit more specific than what the grand jury testimony is. His, it wouldn't change his grand jury testimony, but maybe in the grand jury testimony, they didn't ask some follow-up questions or some specific follow-up questions. So in a way, he's not lying with his messaging. You know, when I'm giving you the, oh, Brian can't wink and a, wink and a nod, I didn't tell him anything they didn't already know. It's possible he did. And why would you, why would you telegraph that to Team Trump? Because they're going after you. They're going after you quickly. They want you brought to an end. And they don't care how much of a nightmare they make your life. Because they're fanatics. So when you're in charge, you got to make, you, you got to watch out for yourself. Plan for your future. In lying on this is not going to put you on the right side of history. So a lot of stuff going on with Brian Kemp right now as far as that goes. Um, little, uh, how useful was uh, Brian Kemp's testimony to Jack Smith? That's a follow-up question here. How useful, I mean, already between the audio recordings and stuff like that, you know, that's, <laughs> did you need a bigger smoking gun? The whole room's filled with smoke with that gun right there, right? But, um, if there were any other questions that were asked, uh, how how well did that help Jack Smith? Did it, did it help any more? Did it seal things up? Not make a difference? What do we got? <clears throat> Queen of Cups. <laughs> we won't find out. They're going to keep a lid. They are going to keep a tight lid. I, th I think he told them some more stuff. I think additional questions were asked and <clears throat> additional answers were given. And we're not going to know about that. Whether or not they enter in the RICO. This could be stuff that doesn't enter in this RICO case, but affects other cases. Whatever he told them, in addition to uh, that, I think they're going to keep under wraps. The alternative version of this is that, um, that Kemp kept a lid on anything and didn't tell him much else. Um, but I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is good. Um, I think he told them more stuff and they're keeping a lid on it. And I think it has to do, I hate to say this, but I think it, it has to do with some trafficking. I, I really do think that one of the biggest, um, secondary investigations that's going on is on human trafficking. And this Knight of Wands tells me that kind of what they're keeping a lid on with additional questions, maybe about people and, 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 and children or something along those lines, it's helping progress that case. You know, a, a less dark way to look at this would be they asked questions, he gave answers. Thank you very much for your... Uh, for doing your your civic duty by answering these questions, you know, just just an agreement and things running the way they should be running. On that one. In the past, we have the death card, um, bringing things to an ending. Get the king is dead. Long live the king. Um, if we leave the human trafficking behind, it, let's let's just hope that I I could just leave that one here. This. Um, it's like the testimony was on the tape was pretty cut and dry. So additional questions they were asking was going to move. You know, they'll ask about the tape, but they're going to move beyond the tape. And it's going to be additional information that impacts Trump. Oh, current situation is a page of swords. I do think that, um, that Kemp did tell him things. Told him extra things that they wouldn't. Confirmed, I should say. They didn't tell him extra things. Confirmed extra things. Could have told him extra things too. Page of Swords is, you know, the spy of the camp type of thing. So he might have volunteered a, a little bit extra information on this. Overarching energy. It's about, you know, integrity. In the end of the day, 
there might be stuff that wasn't recorded or there were other conversations that weren't recorded, at least the recordings weren't released, that um, I do believe Kemp is telling the truth on everything because he knows there's a lot of information out there and he's not going to let his integrity get taken down by lying to cover for Donald Trump. He's not naive. You know, tell him what you know. And if you tell them what you know, they'll stop investigating you. They'll be investigating other people. This will put an end to the government uh, Justice Department pressure on you. Lesson to be learned. There's a lot of value in giving a little information. Sometimes, you know, just a little bit of information, a couple extra sentences, uh, uh, a couple of, no, you might want to talk to this person type thing. That little bit of information yields big rewards. So, yeah, I think I think he might say, you know, you probably should talk to this person. They would probably be able to provide you a lot of insight into that question. You know, that kind of thing there. Outcome, six of wands, victory, um, attention. Yeah, I think whatever he told him helps out with this. Let's just hope, you know, maybe I'm wrong on the, the human trafficking part. Well, let's, let's just park that one right now. But I think whatever he told him is going to help advance uh, a case that they have in a major fashion. You know, give them pennies and it produces dollars, dollar results type of thing. And it's going to help further that investigation a lot. Now, these... This, these coins of information turn into wands of action. Actionable things that can be acted upon. Now, here's, here's six people that you can talk to that could give you more information on these questions that you've asked there. And then when they go follow up with those people, it hits pay dirt. And they get more information and build their case. I don't think we'll find out what what it is that he uh, that he spoke of, unless you know it, during the RICO case, um, there's testimony. You know, it's it's written down on like uh, your deposition. You said this, and they play it, and it's something beyond the uh, uh, the phone call to Georgia, or if another case happens, and then Kemp's uh, deposition shows up in that case. That would be how we'd find out. But otherwise. This will probably just get lost in the ether, as it were. All right. Um, I had another question I was going to ask. Okay, so we looked on the um, the energy around Kemp's... Uh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, how's the drama queen going to uh, uh, take to the news that Kemp has talked to... The DA. I suppose we could just go to Jack Smith. I suppose we could just go to Truth Social and they have a, a, a link. If you do a, a search for Truth Social Donald Trump, you go to it. And it's like, here's Donald Trump's, uh, you know, his uh, his uh, tweets. And then they take you right to what he's been raging about for the last uh, week or so. So Brian Kemp probably got probably got some of the business. Brian Kemp, that twice failed governor from failing Georgia is corrupt with its crime and its corrupt DA and four swords. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you can see where it's going on with that one. It, 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 he's so predictable in what he's going to say. A total witch hunt. There was a perfect phone call. Uh, everything's blown out of proportion by my sneakers, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay. What's Trump thinking about all this? Empress. <laughs> okay, just taking that card right there. The first thought that was coming to mind is, okay, how much did he tell him? What's the impact with this? The thing that causes me to chuckle is like, I made this man. I gave him my endorsement. I, you know, he'd be nothing without me. What a betrayal. You know, it's kind of the... <laughs> The victimhood. I've done everything for you. The, the, the uh, martyr mom. Oh, I've done everything for you, and you don't even know. Whatever. Okay. Let's see. Empress crossed with. Oh, look at that. That card's back again. The um, six of cups. 
And underneath that, there, that, that card was popping up uh, when I was flipping the four swords. Um, underneath it, he might send messaging to Kemp that Kemp should be quiet. If Kemp knows what's good for him, then Kemp will be quiet because I'm connected. Donald Trump, I think, is thinking really dark thoughts about Brian Kemp with this news, to be really honest. Or, and going back to that other thing I was talking about with trafficking, Trump is involved. If Trump's involved with trafficking, and he thinks Trump and thinks Kemp talked about trafficking. He's going to send the words that you better not have said a darn word about this. I don't want to. I can't. I don't like going back to that, but I want to throw it out there because that's what's coming to me. In the past, it's the high priestess. Uh, what's Trump thinking about this? Um, you know, maybe he's realizing the 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 lack of wisdom of being on a phone call and getting recorded saying this. But again, Trump would look at the recording as a betrayal and he's also convinced himself that he did nothing wrong. And I suspect he, in a naive way, he truly believes that it was a perfect phone call. He did nothing wrong. He just asked for Kemp to, you know, take care of things, you know, go check out these crazy claims Rudy's throwing out there about dead people voting. That type of thing. He probably really believes that because he wants to believe it. And Trump, when he wants to believe something, it becomes truth because he repeats it about a gazillion times. Ah, uh, the hanged man. I think maybe he thought, you know, he and Kemp were tight, but he's looking at Kemp in a different light. I don't think he likes what he sees. Uh, Kemp saying this, basically, Kemp is saying that he's on the wrong, I was on the wrong team. Look at all these major arcana here, too. And he might know that if Kemp's testified and told, spoke the truth, that Trump's in a bad way because Kemp knows what Trump was up to. Better be quiet about what you know about me or else. Overarching energy is the Four of Wands. Prison. The if Kemp told him what he thinks he told him, there's a prison cell waiting for Donald because it's going to lead to judgment and it's a betrayal. How dare Kemp do that to Donald? That is an absolute betrayal. Kemp needs to be Kemp needs to be shut up, and it might be too late to shut him up because he's already talked. Dark, dark stuff you may not hear much about it but um <laughs> in some ways if this really did impact donald the way that these cards seem to be indicating that they did uh i would be uh very curious to watch his posts over the next few days because you know trump projects what he's feeling and projects what he's thinking and he projects his fears. He projects the things he's guilty of onto other people. So if all of a sudden a bunch of human trafficking posts start coming up, or Pizzagate or something along those lines, yeah, just keep an eye out for something like that. I might do that too, just as a uh, as a little exercise in follow following my own guidance. Uh, heal or heal thyself. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I do appreciate it. Thank you for your likes and your shares and your comments and everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm so my video makes it out to a wider audience. To those in that wider audience, congratulations for finding us. I hope you found this reading insightful and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.